So what you can do is basically you can create a bipartite graph in which the left side and if you're not like if it's scaring you okay let me let me speak in simple english what i'm saying is let's keep 100 persons here has it ever happened with you that you are giving an interview and suddenly you get this vibe that you won't be able to solve this coding interview problem i know how that feels and today i want to share a few tips that can help you make the most out of this uncomfortable situation this video is being sponsored by educative.io which has a collection of well-crafted written courses for software developers today i have an exciting announcement about their coding interview preparation package which is decode the coding interview it comes in four languages and it helps you prepare for coding interviews by tackling real world problems faced by tech companies. After each company, when they are done about discussing the features, they also share what are the famous interview problems that now you can solve by using the algorithms that you have learned while building these features. Now you can pay $63 per year to buy this course or if you are smart like me, you can get Educative Unlimited in which you pay only once and you get access to all courses on their platform. They have a discount running for India. But for my audience, you get additional discount by using the link in the description below. I'm an ex-Microsoft developer with over four years of experience and I have been a top rated competitive programmer when I was in my college. Today, I want to share a few tips that can help students unblock themselves when they are struggling with some coding interview problem and probably they are able to make some good progress. My idea is basically to share those tips which help you make the best out of an uncomfortable situation. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon. And make sure to watch the complete video with attention so that you can drive the maximum result possible from the tips that I'm going to share. So let's start. So the first tip that I want to share is about your mindset. Attitude really matters. So the first thing that you need to do is accept that uh, you are in a situation in which you're not doing great so far. It's okay. It happens that sometimes you're not able to process things faster enough to solve something or you're not able to just crack that particular idea which which is which which will be used to solve the problem so first thing is to be comfortable knowing that right now you're not doing a good job because let's face it i can totally relate to it how you can you know just think about your mind can be fixated on what are the negative things or the red flags that you have shown to the interviewer and at that point of time having such thoughts will only decrease your probability of solving that question so the first thing is to keep your mind really calm that okay we are in a situation in which we currently do not know what to do anymore and how to make progress. All right. Just keep your mind calm so that you can further follow the steps that I'm going to share with you. So this is the first thing. Keep your mind calm. The next thing that you can try is using the constraints to guess out the algorithm behind the problem or the data structure behind the problem. So every computer programming website like Code Forces, HackerRank, they have these constraints section in every problem that you are solving. They mentioned that the input array size can be up to 100,000 or a million and they have other constraints similarly in this fashion. So what you can do as a programmer is try to guess back and this is not something that I, you know, it's not a very healthy approach, but as I'm saying, like if you're out of ideas and you want to make progress, this is kind of a thing which might work out sometimes. And so how this works is that generally on any competitive programming website, the time limit associated with the problem is generally one second. This means that you can perform up to 10 to the power 8 operations at max. What essentially this means is basically if you are having an input array size of 1000, probably it's a good guess that the intended algorithm behind solving this problem is order n square because 1000 into 1000 is 10 to the power 6. So what you can say is generally for a one second time limit, the number of operations in your overall algorithm should be around 10 to the power 7, 10 to the power 8. 10 to the power 6. If it's 10 to the power 9, definitely you won't be, you're, basically you are having a wrong algorithm. By wrong, I mean it's a very slow algorithm and it's not going to work out. So you have to come up with something smart and better and fast. What this means is if your input array size is, let's say, 100,000, it means that even if you try to do order n square, that becomes 10 to the power 10 and this will be really slow. So, you know, you can, it's a very big hint that you have to think something else, which is better. If the input size is 100,000 most of the times you can say that there is a log n factor that will be coming into the solution which means the overall time complexity should be order n log n so for 100,000 generally um, 
you have order and login solutions and the login factor can be coming from anything like binary search or it can be sorting or it can be something like using STL for example sets and maps all right so generally this is one of the things that if the input array size is 100,000 n log n or sometimes square root decomposition also works if you have something like um, let's say 10,000 which is 10 to the power 4 it means that probably square root is also a possible solution that you can think of let's say in a problem there are two variables involved n and m n is up to let's say 1000 and m is also up to 1000 it means that probably it's kind of you know a dp kind of solution which is order n into m so you have a 2t dynamic programming kind of thing which is going on so these are kind of the things so you have to understand that at max you can do 10 to the power 7 or 10 to the power 8 steps at max and you have to come up with the you know you have to imagine what would be the time complexity and then you can work backwards in figuring out what how like what is there some data structure involved or is there some algorithm involved if there are a lot of queries happening in the questions probably the login factor is coming from segment trees or fenwick trees right so these are the kind of things that you have to keep in mind if the input array size is let's say a million for example it's already 10 to the power 6 right at this point of time square root decomposition it's not going to work out obviously so at max you can go order n login and i'm pretty much sure that it's not about segment trees because segment trees also has a very huge constant factor even if n login solution is there n should be at max 10 to the power 5 generally if it's a million probably it's a suggestion that it's 1d dynamic programming or sometimes it can be a simple greedy problem as well all right so try to see if you can use the constraints to figure out whether you are working on a solution which is extremely slow or um, if you can figure out some time complexity with multiple variables involved you can have a sense of you know whether it's a 2d dynamic programming or it's is it binary search or something like that so um, all i'm trying to say is that try to like and this is as i'm saying this is the last thing that you have to do of course as a problem solver you should try to approach problem first and if you're really blocked and you have to make some progress out of it this is uh, you know kind of the last minute approach that you can take in which you are just you know trying to understand what would be the ideal time complexity of the problem all right the next tip that i want to give is always use dp first and only then go for greedy algorithms so what i'm trying to say is that try to solve the given problem using dynamic programming two things can happen either you are able to build a recurrence and you are able to solve it well and good congratulations or what can happen is you end up solving the problem because dynamic programming can solve a lot of problems but what can happen is you are wasting a lot of memory or you're taking a lot of memory or time uh, in working out the solution so if you are falling in the first case you are good to go but if you're taking a lot of time or if you're taking a lot of space for example if you are solving a problem using 2d dynamic programming and n is already 10 to the bar 5 or 10 to the bar 4 it means that you are taking a lot of space the max space that you can take is around 10 to the bar 7 or 10 to the bar 8 again so uh, again you can't take a space of you know 10 to the bar 10 order n square space won't work in such scenarios so anyways what i'm trying to say is still try to solve using dynamic programming first and if you're getting stuck in such situations in which you're taking too much time the dp is taking too much time the time complexity is really like really bad in those cases what you can do is there are two options the harder one is probably there exist some dp optimizations which won't happen because you are talking about coding interviews if you're a competitive programmer this scenario becomes more probable but for coding interviews especially dp optimizations is not something that i've ever come across so you can say that if this is happening that dp is able to solve the problem but it's taking too much space it's a very big hint that now you have to go for a greedy algorithm all right which means that you have to figure out some observation like you have to do some observation and figure out some idea in which you can say that hey man if i do something like this if i do this greedily not only i'm saving space and time but this is going to give me the correct solution all right so this is how i get confidence in my greedy so solutions if i'm if i can see that dp is taking a lot of space or time only then i go for greedy solutions and try to you know come up with some observation that can help me solve the problem so always try to solve it with dp and only then go forward with a greedy solution because greedy solutions are very easy for your mind to process like you will feel that let's just sort and pick up the last element and do something with it and this will give me the right answer but you know to prove the correctness of greedy algorithms is really very very tricky all right so that's why i'm saying always try to see if dp can solve it only if you can see that dp is not able to give you any answer then go for greedy algorithms awesome
the next tip that i also want to say is sometimes if nothing is working out if let's say the question is not based on dp or not even a greedy algorithm sometimes binary search on answer is a very cool trick that you can try what essentially it means that you are doing binary search but on answer so just to give you an example about what this technique is all right so i'm just making up an example don't just judge me that whether this is the perfect solution for this but just to like elaborate on what binary search on answers mean it means that you check whether some answer is possible and if it's possible then you go in the upper half or lower half range something like that and just to give an example let's say if i'm giving you a string and i say that hey give me the longest substring palindrome longest substring palindrome for this given string so now what i'm trying to say is that so let's say if the answer is 30 all right so if the answer is 30 so it means that the longest substring is of length 30 and it is a palindrome so it means that a palindrome of length 28 also exists right because i remove the end characters and the remaining length 28 is also a palindrome 26 length will also exist as a palindrome 24 will also exist as a palindrome and so on so can i say that if i have found a substring which is a palindrome and its length is let's say 14 can i say that the answer is at least 14 right because 14 is possible then 12 10 8 6 everything is possible right so this is binary search on answer for a given length i so basically i will fix my length i will try to check whether a length let's say 78 can i find a palindrome of length 78 and if i can then i can say that all right now the answer definitely rise in the range 78 to whatever range i have so if input size was let's say 200 i can say that okay 78 length palindrome exists this means that i now have to check the answer between 78 to 200 because the longest palindrome definitely has a length in between this all right so when you are doing this binary search at every time the answer search space reduces by half so you are doing log and binary searches and every binary search to check whether you know a length of 78 exists as a substring which is also a palindrome for that you can take order and time so the idea is perform log and binary searches and for every binary search you pick up a choice pick up an answer and you check in order and time whether that can exist as an answer so in order and log and time in this way you can solve the problem all right so this was an idea i i'm not sure if uh, you got it but yeah hopefully if you paid attention you did understand the gist of it so this is another technique and if you're not able to make progress with the previous steps try to see if this is something binary search on answer is something that you can try on that moving on sometimes um, using graph manipulations on a problem really you know changes the scope of the problem and now it becomes a different kind of problem and you are now easily able to solve it using a standard algorithm for example let's say there are 100 people each person is having some preference to some job id so let's say there are 100 jobs 100 people and you are given an array which in which the ith value is telling the pref the preference of the ith person so it will contain the id that the ith person is interested in now i ask you that um you have to figure out uh, like what is the maximum number of people that you can make happy a person is happy if he gets the job of his preference right so now this is a simple array that i have given to you but to solve this you can use graphs and how is that possible so what you can do is basically you can create a bipartite graph in which the left side and if you're not like if it's scaring you okay let me let me speak in simple english what i'm saying is let's keep 100 persons here 100 jobs here let's draw arrows so if 13th person is interested in 78th job i draw an edge from the 13th person to 78th job so i draw these lines which is basically telling the preference of each person right now what i can do is if i look at this there are two sets like one is the set of people and one is the set of jobs and what essentially is happening is i'm having edges which is telling me like this person is interested in this job and so on and now the problem becomes i have to pick up maximum edges from this graph such that no two edges share any common vertex make sense because if i'm picking edges which are really you know disjoint they have no common connections it means that i am making those many people happy if i pick four edges so i have allotted four jobs to people of their preference and four people are happy so i have to pick maximum edges so this is a very standard problem and you can again perform more graph manipulations on top of it to even make it more interesting so for this scenario what you can do is you can add one node over here and you can connect all these people to edges with this source node 
and you can keep their capacity as one all right and all these job references edges were also having a capacity of one let's think of it as water pipes so i'm having one source over here node and all people are connected to connected to it with pipes and the capacity of that pipe is one liter and then these people and these jobs they were having these preference pipes and the capacity of that is also one liter and then all these jobs are connected to a destination node and again every job id is connected to that destination node using a pipe of capacity one one liter now what i can say is the answer to the original problem is same as what is the maximum flow possible from source to destination all right because if the maximum flow is 5 liters it means that there were five unique paths from source to destination and each path is having capacity of 1 liter because that's how we have created this graph and max flow is a standard problem which is already solved in the field of computer science and that's exactly what i'm saying sometimes changing the perspective of the given problem can really help so this is something which is really tricky and maybe it's being asked to some intermediate or advanced um like companies like google or direct as something like that can ask some tricky questions like that but yeah this is something which i really wanted to share because it's so beautiful another thing is if you are dealing with a lot of queries like you are given some arrays or some situation and then you have to answer a lot of queries there are generally two things that you can do you can generally use pre processing and store something which can help you answer those queries really fast for example if you are given a situation in which um you are given an array and then the queries are about give me the sum from l to r right so if you build the prefix sums already then in order one time you can give the sum of any sub array because a sub array sum of this much size is nothing but the prefix sum of all the numbers minus the prefix sum of these numbers so this will give you the sub array sum in order one time all right so these are kind of the things that you can do pre processing is something which can help you really answer queries faster or sometimes if um, pre processing pre processing is not going to work out what you can do is you can use segment freeze or fenwick freeze so that's another you know like if the estimate time complexity was order n log n then log n can also come from and if you are dealing with queries in the problem there are a lot of queries probably a good idea to use segment freeze or fenwick freeze over there another tip that i want to say is if the input size is small but not very small right if it's too small then something like bit masking or iterating on all supersets like for example if i'm giving you a string of length 10 or 5 let's say really small numbers and then i ask you to you know um, generate all the permutations so there are n factorial permutations of a given string if n is the length of that so in that case these are you know checking your uh, ability to write correct code which is it's not like some fancy algorithm or something it's just about whether you are able to generate these permutations kind of thing which is a bit tricky to write in terms of code but yeah sometimes this also happens like there's no algorithm involved it's just about implementation base but if you increase the constraints a bit high but not too high for example something like 40 in 40 sometimes or 36 or 38 it's a very big hint to use meet in the middle technique you can check about that on youtube i'm not going to dignify that but um this is another like typical condition the input constraints are very small but not too small all right so essentially what that happens is if it's 40 the idea of meet in the middle is you split the input size into groups of 20 and 20 you perform all permutations here all permutations here or i mean all combinations here if it's bit masking then 2 to the power 20 over here 2 to the power 20 over here this becomes a million here a million here which is 10 to the power 6 which is easy to be solved in under 1 second as we have discussed and then you combine the results of all these to finally give the solution for the input size of 40 something like that so yeah um these were few tips that i wanted to share and the last tip which is really important um it's about you know keeping your mind open so that you are not missing on hints as interviewers their job is also to you know give you a time or a situation or an environment in which you are trying to you know show your skills so if you are really stuck it's fine to acknowledge that and you know communicate that probably you need a hint and if the interviewers are giving them and if the interviewers are giving hints themselves sometimes what happens is you are too much lost into your thoughts or in your mind map that you are ignoring what the person is saying which is a really red flag because if you are giving interviews and you are in an uncomfortable situation you should definitely keep your mind calm and open and listen to these hints that they are giving you and make sure to align your calm mind 
in that direction so that you can make progress even if you do that it's a very positive sign and people would like to hire you anyways all right so i hope this video was useful um, let me know in comments if you enjoyed this video if you found this video useful make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel and spread this video around i'll see you in the next one guys till then happy coding and bye bye